Well, here we are at the AI Summit in New York. I'm happy to say we've got Omdia with us, David Green. Welcome, David. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? Good. So you've been at the show for a day. What do you think so far? It's, I'm still loving the fact we're back in person, back in the room for, for these kind of shows. Um, so yeah, quite, quite a lot of people around has been has been good. Some of the tracks have been kind of interesting with the with the panels and the and the presentations and stuff as well. Um, I, the, the last one I was at was London, um, and it's interesting to see the slightly different focus New York has. A lot more of the, the enterprises, for example, a lot from you know retail, finance, healthcare, that kind of stuff. And um, hoping to see some more of that on the on the track tomorrow as well. Yeah, so you're doing an, an opening an opening tomorrow what are you what's a little preview of that yeah on the on the digital transformation stage um, well we've got we've got a really interesting lineup tomorrow we've got a lot of um, kind of C-levels uh, execs um, presenting of course they they maybe have a slightly different focus to the, the kind of nuts and bolts and some of the data scientists that we that we hear from some some of the others so um, there's a lot about ROI of course everything comes back down to the numbers um, for example with the Omdi research we, we know that the top three KPIs that people tend to use is cost reduction time reduction and engagement. Um, cost reduction and time reduction, no surprise. I'm sure that will come up tomorrow. That's about the, the bottom and top line. Um, engagement is an interesting one. Engagement, not just from a uh, customer engagement. Um, again, we've got a presenter from retail. I'm sure definitely customer engagement is, is, is a big topic there. But also employee engagement, which I think is, is overlooked a little bit sometimes. But in the age of remote working, um, and I'm sure we'll hear from a guy from Zoom um, talking about the, about the kind of remote working aspect tomorrow. But actually, AI spend there is, is kind of on the increase as well, whether it's finance or HR or, or, or that kind of thing to, yeah, to, to, to help with the, the employee engagement and solve some of that human problem, which is actually you've got to have the right people um, to implement some of these applications that we're hearing about. Um, so you're consulting directors. So you've got to look at kind of the present and the future. If you look at, say, 2021 and 2022, what are you seeing as any kind of differences? Um, uh, that, it, great question, because that, that, I think it's an evolution. I don't necessarily think there's anything revolution about it, but that's that's AI, right? I always say there's, there's no arrival at AI. There's steps along the journey, but you, you don't ever reach it, right? You don't have the, the great turn on date for, for AI and said, hey guys, we've, we've solved it. So um, operationalizing um, people increasingly looking at the vertical rather than just the horizontal technology. Like I said, we've heard a lot from um, some, some, some industries have increased their AI spend j despite the COVID pandemic. Um, some you'd expect healthcare, for example. Clearly, there's this spend there. Um, retail is another one. Um, finance is kind of staying strong, but a lot of the a lot of the verticals that were already investing have seen so much extra benefit, so much extra ROI over the last 12 months. So going into next year, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a, a revolution. We're hearing a lot about data fabric. I think maybe as people push beyond POC and into production they're starting to realize maybe where they went wrong on some things, but also that you have to get those foundations right. So the kind of the data fabric or the data culture or whatever it might be, um, that's a, a, a big kind of step next year. I think we'll hear a lot more about that. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's it's boring to say more of the same, but it is it, it is an evolution. It's, it's, so, it's, so are we well beyond the proof of concept stage for most companies? I think it, it varies. It varies dramatically. Um, so we, we just ran a, a survey. This was um, focused on manufacturing and industrial in particular. And we asked that very question, what, what proportion of your POCs actually make it to full production? And the answer was 43%, which kind of sparked this, am I an optimist or a pessimist in my mind of going, how do I feel about that number? Um, I think it was higher than I anticipated. And then I caught myself going, so so am I saying over 50% failing is a good thing? Um, so it's kind of, you know, but, but it is increasing. Um, a lot of the time uh, people need to see that proof of concept, not just from their own, but they need to see that benefit that other people have seen, and then they can kind of kind of, kind of adopt. So yeah, we're definitely not beyond the, hey, everything's solved, it's ready to go. The other thing, and this was one of the things that came out of London, was the, the, the classic phrase, it takes more than one, it takes a village, right? So I also think there's a lot of value placed on the fact that the more people you can partner with, the more people that are involved, the, 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 involving the right people, you can get to the right solution quicker. Maybe that will increase that number that make it beyond PO. So should every enterprise be doing something in AI, at least for learning? I, I think most enterprises are. I, I don't even think it's a, yeah, they should do. Um, or at least everyone says that they're doing AI, right? Whether it's analytics or it's actually full AI. Um, I think, absolutely. And these things snowball. 
So once you have the, the, a lot of the time getting that data visibility, back to another data word, right? Data visibility, once you have some of those foundational blocks in place, you can start layering more and more applications on, on top. So um, yeah, I would I would say that the vast majority, um, I think in, again, that same survey, we asked kind of where are you on AI adoption? I think only 17% were at that, we're not even investigating yet. And, and every time we run a survey like that, that number is dropping. Um, again, 43% said they, uh, this is industrial manufacturing, but 43% said they were actually in the POC, either developing or um, kind of actually watching a, a live application right now to see how it goes. So every time we run something like that, more people are, are, are getting further along that process. So what might surprise you next year? What might surprise us next year? Um, I think, obviously, the, the elephant in the room is COVID, right? That, that, that keeps on being a, an evolving situation. But like I said, that's in many ways um, has really crystallized where some of the ROIs are for, for AI. It's shown the power of AI in, in, in those kind of manners. So um, even, even where there are challenges, people can find the, the, the kind of opportunities and the, and the learning that we can take from that. So um, as, as for the rest, I don't know, I guess um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you after tomorrow's track and, and see what I learned from the, from the presentation today. <laughs> so a year from now, we're sitting here and having this conversation. What will we be talking about? Um, what will we talk about? The same about? thing, maybe? Yeah, I, again, I know it's, it's the boring answer I said earlier. It's, it's evolution, not revolution. But it, it, it is exactly that. It's kind of layering application on, on top of each other. As I said, I think the, the next tra challenge um, as people operationalize AI, there's a big um, conversation, and, and our colleague Brad Chimin will be presenting on this on the stage tomorrow, about um, whether that's being kind of operationalized internally or whether that's being with the vendor support. Um, and again, the last six months has been a lot of talk of the human challenge, the, the having the right people in the organization, retaining those people in the organization, um, particularly on the enterprise side, a little bit on the vendor side as well. So I think maybe next year we'll, we'll, we'll hear where they are and the applications that they're dreaming up. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think there'll be kind of crazy revolution on, on, on that. Thank you very much. No, thank you.